Well, hello to you all beautiful freedom fighters from all around the world, especially the Patriots in Britannia. Welcome back to 2CTV. We have some interesting news, uh, the latest update from what's going on in the Middle East and the effects of it in America in the upcoming US presidential elections. Oh, Sleepy Joe is not having a good time. Let's get on with the show. All right, let's start this by giving you guys the latest uh, update. Over the last few days, of course, uh, we had Blinken uh, from the US government going to uh, Israel to put pressure on the Israeli government on how they should defend themselves or they, maybe they shouldn't defend themselves and just allow the Islamists to, to take over. He met with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and other uh, cabinet members in Israel and he basically conveyed a message uh, on behalf of Sleepy Joe. And by, by the way, when we say Joe Biden, there's no matters, message coming from Joe Biden because he doesn't even know where he is half the time. It's not him who's in charge. It's the US globalists uh, who are behind the scenes in charge. The likes of uh, Barack Hussein Obama and many others. It's not even just Barack. It's also the others who also created him as a puppet in the first place. Now they're going around the world telling everybody else how they should run their own countries. So Netanyahu decided to hit back. And over the last uh, 24 hours or so, the result of it has been disastrous for uh, Joe Biden because especially after Trump came out to take Netanyahu's side, uh, the opinion polls have completely collapsed for Joe Biden. Rightly so. I mean, he was already having it anyway. But it seems like uh, even the, uh, the chunk of the, the more liberal-minded Jews in, uh, in the US, uh, like in California, even they were loyal to Biden and the Democrats until now, even they've decided to turn their backs. So it's all kicking off anyway. We'll get your reaction live on this uh, show in a second. But uh, this is what Benjamin Netanyahu said to Blinken after he went to Israel a few days ago. Uh, he said, I met with the Secretary of State and uh, I told him that I really appreciate the fact that uh, for more than five months we have been standing together against Hamas, right? I also told him that we recognize the, the need to evacuate the civilian population from the war zones and of course also take care of the humanitarian need and we are working to that end. But I also said that there is no way for us to defeat Hamas without going into Rafa and eliminating the rest of the battalion there. I told him that I hope we will do it with the support of the US but if we have to we will do it alone. Biden wasn't happy about this, so he hit back saying, well, no, we can't. Uh, if I'm telling you uh, what to do with your own country, with your own government, you have to listen to Bibi. The issue with this was that Netanyahu has already won the argument. Uh, the IDF have won the argument. We've been talking about this Rafa operation for about two, three weeks now. Any other military in the world, any defense force, by, the, by this point, they would have been in there destroying the whole place. The idea, because they're under so much pressure, they had to delay and delay and delay the operation and to make sure there are humanitarian corridors ready and everything else for civilians. And when they go into Rafah, they're still going to call genocidal. They're still going to be accused of doing genocide, even though they've been given so much <clears throat> time in advance, a heads up, and make sure all the humanitarian stuff goes in first. And Joe Biden doesn't care because he thinks if he panders to the far left and the anti-Jewish side, is going to win the election. Well, it's completely backfired now, isn't it? Because those who are extremely left-wing and Islamist in America, they're not going to vote for Biden anymore because they still see him as someone who's been supporting Israel until now. Yeah, Israel and America might have fallen out now, but that's not how the far left sees it. Gallant, obviously, uh, is uh, going to the US, calling Channel 14, uh, as the Rafa operation obviously gets closer. The Israeli... Defense Minister will try to get US support for the ground invasion of Rafa after Netanyahu told uh, Blinken that obviously there's no way for us to win without going into Rafa. We'll go with or without you. But Netanyahu's government are still trying to be nice about it. They're still trying to say, hey, we're going to cooperate. Do you want to help or not necessarily help because I don't want any handouts or anything like that. They just said, do we have your backing because we know that the United Nations and all the other nutters are going to get together, ICJ, to find the tiniest flaws in this operation and they're gonna they're gonna do some sort of resolution they're gonna get the UN Security Council it is absolutely fascinating all these tyrannical governments <clears throat> all around the world 
including the Taliban in Afghanistan, they could do whatever they want every day, the Iranian regime as well. There are no UN Security Council resolutions against them. There are no ICJ court cases against them in The Hague. But the IDF trying to defend themselves, oh no, no, that's just too bad. That's evil. <laughs> Crazy people. Anyway, and now they, they, they obviously the, the Speaker of the House, uh, Johnson, Mike Johnson, decided to make uh, Joe Biden even angrier by inviting Netanyahu to address the US Congress. The, the whole thing is going to kick off completely. And Trump has said that he's going to be there uh, to support and um, obviously with Netanyahu and of course Johnson. And this is going to completely change the narrative in the mainstream media in America as well. So Johnson obviously invited Netanyahu to join uh, for a joint Congress session to highlight the US-Israel um, solidarity. And uh, with this invitation uh, to be viewed positively by U.S. citizens, uh, and, I mean, a lot of people have been asking this question. Mario said this on X. So obviously, the source is a zero hedge. Um, there is also another issue because um, Zelensky is watching this, and Zelensky is not too happy with all the attention going towards Israel again. <laughs> so it is fascinating how everybody wants attention from the U.S. because the U.S. are still the world police for some reason, globalists. But at the same time, they also criticize them. It's, it's a confusing situation. This is the, the fault of the U.S. Democrats. They made a complete mess because they think everything has to be staged, managed. And everybody else around the world will have to listen to the U.S. government. I don't think they should. If you want to tell anybody what to do, why not go to Afghanistan and tell Taliban what to do? Maybe that could be a good start. Or go to Qatar. Tell the Qataris what to do. Go to Iran. Tell the Iranians what to do instead of giving them free money on a regular basis. That's the world police that we need. <clears throat> now, Trump is happy. He's celebrating all this uh, because it's helping him with his election. Uh, Trump has now accused Biden of election interference. This is a whole separate issue that's completely kicking off again, not helping Biden. Uh, he went on True Social, uh, Trump, uh, to say, at what point are the actions of a sitting president using law for, um, against his opponent for purposes of election interference considered illegal? I believe, as do various highly respected legal scholars, that crooked Joe Biden has long since crossed over that very sacred threshold. This was, of course, the President Trump saying that on Truth Social. And again, he's right, because there is no clear red line that's been um, set when it comes to the US Democrats and whatever they want to do in every election mainly because they have enough people infiltrating the from the FBI to the courts and everything else, it doesn't really help the situation. Now, those watching this from America, those actual patriots, nationalists in America, who actually want to make America great again, and those are the ones who are also supporting nationalists all around the world. If you're a nationalist, you have to support nationalists in every country, as long as they're not nutters. So... Uh, the American nationalists are supporting the British nationalists. The British nationalists are supporting the Argentinian nationalists uh, who are backing Javier Millet. The Argentinian nationalists are supporting the Israeli nationalists who just want to have a country and live. And everything, and we're supporting the Iranian nationalists who want to fight against the Islamic occupation. That's the only solidarity that we have. We do not believe in interference, globalist interference. It's none of our job to go out there, tell the other countries how to live their lives, unless you're doing it in self-defense. If a country is attacking you, then of course you're going to have to interfere and defend yourself. But going around the world, giving free money, your, your, your tax money, to all these governments and countries with the hope of the, some sort of collaboration in the future, it's, it's disgusting. That's what we did with Mujahideen in Afghanistan, and then we created all these groupie nutters, whether it's the Taliban or Al-Qaeda. Stop that. It doesn't work anymore. <clears throat> Marshallah says that the problem is Maya. We have to look at the fact that uh, cannot be denied, and uh, this is that Russia has killed le less or fewer civilians in over two years than Israel has killed in two months. <laughs> when you, start, you do realize the numbers coming in regards to the humanity, the, the civilians' losses in Gaza is coming directly from the, the health minister in Gaza, which is Hamas. There is no independent observer counting. That's not what's happening. Whereas in Ukraine and in Russia and other places, you still have independent observers trying to check. And even that, you can't really fully get the exact number. They just say roughly out oh, 10,000 people. It's not exactly 10,000. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. 
but going around saying that, that from the beginning, on our side came and said, yeah, billions of people died over the last 10 minutes. And people say, yeah, yeah, we believe that. What do you mean you believe that? If that were the case, they would have been in Rafa right now, destroying the whole place. Free the hostages first, then we could talk about the civilians. The responsibility to look after civilians in each country is the responsibility of the government. If the Islamists in Gaza didn't want their civilians to be hurt, why did they go and invade Israel in October? Why did they, do the hostage, they take the hostages? It's the job of every government to look after the civilians of their own country. It's not the job of a foreign country to look after your own civilians, especially when they're fighting you. And also, let's not forget, the, the reason that the, in terms of civilian losses, whether from the Ukrainian side or the Russian side, um, is less, it's not just because Hamas lies about numbers, it's also because uh, both sides are using uh, professional armies, and of course a lot of others who join them, with all the equipment. Whereas the Islamists in Gaza, they are hiding among civilians, pretending to be like, oh, I'm just a normal beardy weirdy, just going around, without wearing any uniforms, or any, any sort of tanks or anything like that, and they're still trying to send missiles to Israel. It's not a fair fight between Russia and Ukraine, or any other conflict, you clearly know. You're looking at someone, oh, that's a Russian soldier. Oh, that's a Ukrainian soldier. Let's just go target them. That's not what they're doing when it comes to Islamists in Gaza. They're hiding among civilians. <clears throat> we James says, uh, I agree with a recent comment. Uh, So-called Palestinians, who are just uh, a bunch of mixed Arabs, uh, celebrated the October 7th, yeah? uh, not only in Gaza, but all over the West. They will continue. It was literally on the first night, the evening of the 7th, when in London we had people celebrating with Palestinian flags, before Israel even did the counterattack. It makes no sense. And let's not forget that the Hamas side and Hezbollah continue almost on a daily basis to target Israel. The media are not reporting it, but we are reporting it. But they're making it sound like it's like some sort of one-sided fight, that the IDF is just targeting the other side. The other side continue to send missiles. If they didn't have the Iron Dome, the whole Israel would have been wiped out by now. Izzy says, um, honestly, no, Biden and Blinken are making Netanyahu very popular and more protected as the people see Americans' efforts at regime change as an uh, affront to their freedoms. A new election today, he may win. I know that the thing is, Netanyahu is not an angel. We know that. And I'm not a big fan of his cabinet in general. But the more they do this nonsense, the globalists in America, the more you're going to make Netanyahu popular. <laughs> he, he had so many issues to deal with all the corruption cases and allegations. And there are still protests in Tel Aviv, as we've been reporting on the channel, that are continued. They're, they're, obviously, Tel Aviv is a liberal city, um, and the, the, the left-wingers are protesting against uh, Netanyahu's government. They were doing it in September, in, in August, everywhere. But now, <laughs> you're creating more unity among the Israelis. It is fascinating how these idiots don't understand what they're doing. Because the, the, the globalists' agenda has always been to manage um, the ge geopolitical issues. So at one, uh, at one point, they would back Netanyahu. And another point, they would say, well, we're going to have to bring him down. So that's what they're trying to do. They're going to bring him down so that they could manage the next guy. So before, back in the day, they used to do change dictators and install a new dictator. But they're still doing it, even in more democratic places. They can still do a coup, bring you down. I mean, it's a, ter it's a terrible example. And it didn't happen for those reasons. But we're talking about the state or deep state or whatever you want to call it. Same thing happened when it came to Liz Truss. Now, Liz Truss was also not really competent as a manager to uh, deal with all the mess that was created. But when they want to get rid of you, Liz Truss was elected by the members of the Tory party. They're like, no, we don't care. We're going to bring it, bring it down. We'll manage the next guy. And the next guy became a puppet like Rishi. It's easier to manage him. Now, that's not the same as obviously the geopolitical stuff, but it's the same argument that the people behind the scenes think that they should just manage our lives. <clears throat> crazy people all right mikey b says trump 2024 whoop whoop <laughs> of course cctv will be in, in america reporting from the u.s elections uh, after we report uh, our messy general election that's coming up that's going to be interesting uh, prime minister keir starmer ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Mike Stewart says Palestine is, 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 is an illegitimate uh, state. Long live Israel. It's not a real place. Stop trying to make it a thing. 
until literally the 60s and definitely 40s that the word Palestinian just referred to anybody who lived in that area. That included Christians and Jews and Muslims. Now the word Palestinian just simply means Arab Muslims. I'm like what? You can't just change and then they can't create a new flag by removing the star from the Jordanian flag. You can't just create new things and pretend it's been there for ages. <laughs> Silly. Uh, I missed Super Chat. Where are the Super Chats? Sorry, I apologize. I, I didn't realize. Um, first Super Chat from Marina. Thank you from Israel. Israel doesn't give a damn about UN resolutions. And, well, they're used to it at this point. For the past 30, 40 years, longer than that, it's just a regular occurrence. They just completely vote against them, even if they just breathe. The Israeli politicians wake up and breathe. Yeah, UN resolution against them. No one cares. Super chat from Nathan N. Thank you very much. And of course, uh, one of our regulars, Blackfish Blues, saying uh, Assad killed more, uh, lots more in, uh, civilians in Syria. No, no one cares. <laughs> no one cares about uh, any other Arab country doing it to the other Arabs, like in Yemen, in Sudan, and all the other places. No one even cares about what the Nigerian Islamists are doing to Nigerian Christians. Even right now, as we speak, they're wiping them out. No protests. Outside the Nigerian embassy, for example. Super chat from Brian. Yank here. <laughs> US policy is about the election in November. Uh, Biden has already lost the Arab vote. Yep. In the two US states, uh, which normally vote Democrat. It's done. It's over. They'll, and the, the only way they can somehow stop this, that the return of Trump is something, I don't know, take him away or take him out or uh, find something. They, they, they can't really stop the democratic wave that's coming against um, Joe Biden. Maya is comfortable with his lies like at like a the others like a the that's not English. He us taking us for fools but the world is not stupid. The mo the world is not stupid but the people who can't write English might be uh, what it what? Okay, I, I, if you're going to do allegations or any sort of trolling, give context. That would be easier. Like, if you like say exactly what, what was the lie. Where is the lie? That, that sentence makes no sense. At least it spelled my name right. Usually they don't. <laughs> uh, let's not forget, by the way, 23rd, is it 23rd? 23rd of April, St. George's Day. We're going to be in Whitehall, Westminster, taking over all the football hooligan far right. <laughs> Uh, also, I do have something funny for you guys, because we like to laugh every now and then. This is hilarious. So, for years and years and years and years, in the West, like in the UK, some in the Islamic community have been going around making fun of Christianity for becoming uh, commercialized. You go to supermarkets, Christmas, everything, right? Guess what's happened now? Marks and Spencers. <laughs> All the supermarkets are now commercializing Ramadan. <laughs> the same thing that the Islamic community were basically making fun of when it came to Christianity, uh, Easter and Christmas and everything. Wow, how do you like them apples? Now it's happening to you. Are you okay with this? You didn't like it when it happened to Christianity. You were saying, oh, well, Christianity doesn't matter anymore. It's commercialized. Well, Ramadan is commercialized now as well. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> Lynn says, you are wrong, Maya. Well, that happens a lot. Johnson has utterly failed to do his job, as have all the rhinos. They get no pass, just as guilty. Okay, I'm not a fan of Johnson, by the way. I, I, how am I wrong? Okay, if Jeremy Corbyn tomorrow comes out and says something right, which he won't. If Jeremy Corbyn is still Jeremy Corbyn, is a nutter. But somehow he comes out and says, I support a flat rate tax of 10%. I would say Jeremy Corbyn is right. Doesn't mean Jeremy Corbyn is right about everything else. It doesn't even mean that his motive is right. And he's not going to say that, by the way. So when I talk about Johnson and what he's doing right now when it comes to going against Biden, he's right. But he's also a rhino. So how am I wrong? Nothing is black and white. Everything is obviously uh, depending on circumstances also. Joe Biden is a complete nutter anyway. So um, it doesn't work like that. So if, as I said, even if tomorrow uh, the Taliban come out and uh, promote a free market, 
<laughs> I would say, go tell them. <laughs> of course I won't. And because they won't. <clears throat> um, what is going on with you guys? Ramadan is a Ramadan day. <laughs> Ramadan is now completely commercialized. Let's not forget about that. And that is, it's getting funnier now. Um, what's this? Okay, some usernames are like sentences. So I don't know where the username stops and where the actual comments start. I think it's, okay. Mayor Khan and Santa proudly present Ramadan. Yeah, <laughs> got it. It was cryptid. Anyway. Broken Prophet says, uh, Ramadan ding dong. <laughs> Amazing. And Gary is also right. Let's all hit the like button together. All at the same time. Three, two, one, go. I don't know why I'm doing it. There's no button for me. And AFC Man UK says, I'm not ramming Dan. <laughs> I think uh, AFC Man UK has officially won today's uh, comments challenge. Yes, you won. That was funny. Um, Robert says the question should be why would a rhino go against Biden same reason why a liberal Tory like Penny Morden is going against Keir Starmer because there are different political parties that <laughs> they would rather do their own liberalism their own way so you've got the Republican liberals trying to basically take over everyone's power for themselves let's not forget about that there's a reason the rhinos go against Biden why would they want Biden in place it makes no sense because the rhinos are not going to get welcomed by the Democrats. Now, they're not going to get wel welcomed by the, the conservative Republicans either. By the way, in case you don't know what rhino is, it's a Republican in name only, just in case you don't know. Morris's Monkey asks a very good question. Where are you, Alan? Where is Alan? <laughs> it's a lot of inside jokes. Um, the Alan thing became fascinating because um, obviously when we go to these protests, the Islamist, Islamist protests, uh, I somehow, sometimes end up shouting Alan snack bar. You know, I've got a friend who's got a snack bar. His name is Alan. But then there was this issue a few months ago, a couple of weeks ago. This guy just started shouting at the live chat. And then it says, Alan, show him this. But I think he was just talking to someone else while talking to me at the same time. It was funny. <laughs> oh, there you go. We got another one. Ram Alan Dan. Just when I thought you couldn't get better. That was funnier. Good. <laughs> This Hindu guy is mad because no one wants to worship a cat. Do I look Hindu? <laughs> do I? <laughs> Firstly, when did I become Indian? Also, why Hindu? Oh, why would you worship a cat when you can eat it? Have you never tried sirloin? No, ribeye. You should try my like specialty ribeye recipe. I make the best ribeye. All the cow gods will be unhappy. So. For that reason, I can't be, well, Indian, but also I can't be a Hindu because I love a good ribeye, baby. <laughs> Hindu, dear, dear. Now I need steak. See what you've done? It's all your fault now. Now I need to get steak for lunch. It's also three o'clock. I haven't had lunch. You're making me angry now. That's why I'm angry. I need steak. Kate says, oh my God. <laughs> oh, funny humans. Morris is, yeah, monkey. Hindu. I know, I know, right? It's brilliant. Why Hindu? It's very specific. <clears throat> Izzy's right. Izzy also doesn't worship cows. She eats them. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Lizard says, Hindu ribeye. Oh, that would be good. Isn't it? <laughs> Can a ribeye be Hindu? <laughs> Tusi is a Syrian, you gimp. I, I'm not actually. Um, obviously, Ethnicity Persian, but um, background in terms of ancestors, um, family-wise, um, the well, we had a chunk of Christians, but also sort of like Assyrians, uh, Christians, but also Zoroastrians, which is the ancient Persian per Persian religion. Uh, but yeah, so not Islam, not Muslim, not Hindu, not a Jew, <laughs> um, just just good, good old-fashioned Persian Christianity and uh, Zoroastrianism. Uh, which, is, which is similar to Assyrians, by the way. Uh, if For those who know Patrick Bet David um, and his uh, PBD podcast in America, he's also Persian. Obviously, he came, he went to America as a kid and he's Assyrian, essentially, um, which doesn't exist anymore, obviously. <laughs> but that's the ethnicity, clearly. Uh, right. Anyway, 
We are where we are. Now I'm going to go find a cow, turn the cow into a nice ribeye, and, uh, oh no, cat world is not happy. Maya, stop talking about eating cows. I'm vegetarian and it hurts my feelings. <laughs> You haven't tried my ribeye. I'm going to go sort that out and we're going to come back later to talk about what's going on with uh, Tommy Robinson and uh, some other British nationalists uh, like Steve Laws. They have a big clash. Division doesn't really help, but we are where we are. Subscribe to the channel. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.